Hi guys, welcome to our channel. We have started a new series of movies reviews in which we will tell you about a movie, what's right and what's not in this movie. Today we will give a review on The Longest War because there is a lot of demand to give a review on it. Friends must like our videos because it takes a lot of efforts to make a video. Comprehensive and clear Greybocker films tell the story of US involvement that in infuriating at time before dealing at other and mostly just sad. If you are looking for some old fashioned nan partisan outrage where anger or sadness is independent on political learning or partly affiliation, you can find it in The Longest War, the Sobering Afghanistan documentary by Gray Barker, the Premier Sudane and Showtime. The film is a dissection of US military involvement in Afghanistan, the longest running war in US history, and the morass with enough blame to go ground to leaders of all affiliations. That much is made clear in the first few minutes of the film when a reverse timeline shows the last seven presidents Trump, Obama, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Reagan, and Carter all promising things that didn't happen. Comprehensive and clear, the film tells the story of US involvement that is infuriating at times buffeting at others and mostly just sad. My heart hurts for these people, says CIA targeter Lisa Modox of the Aquans at one point because I just don't see how this ends. The film's executive producers are Homeland creator Alex Ganza and Howard Curzon who have set their show's final season in Afghanistan with the longest war premiering after their series Panel Tillmate episodes. It will be the second movie directed by Bakker to premiere in three days. Sergio, a narrative film inspired by the 2009 documentary of the same name, landing on Netflix on Friday. Apart from the news, Sergio Barker's entire career has been in non-fiction with his other films including Corrin by Hurt, the Emmy-winning Manhunt, The Inside Story of Hunt for Bin Laden and The Final Year about foreign policy in the last year of the Obama administration. His storytelling story is methodical but well paced as the throws out an array of journalists, American and international officials in the military and intelligence communities and Afghan citizens. And the patient chronological telling is necessary to make a sense of a conflict that goes back to Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979 and has turned into as much of pure gamma for Americans as it was for the Soviets. Over the years, the US worked toward Pakistan to arm and back the rebels who were fighting the USSR and who succeeded in driving out the Soviets after 10 years, then stood back and watched the Taliban rise to power under a promise that they would purify and reunite the country under Islam. They became interested in the country after the terrorist organization Al-Qaeda formed there under the leadership of Osama bin Laden then went into country in full force after 9-11 only to turn its size to Iraq in 2003 and let its operation in Afghanistan slide further into chaos. The longest war tracks the comings and goings, the change in attitude and its tactics. On instructive juxtaposition during the Clinton administration, the CIA had an opportunity to kill bin Laden, but the president has signed an order stating that they could use lethal activity against a terrorist leader, but only if the purpose of the activity was not to kill him. Only a few years later, after 9-11, the CIA not only had order to kill bin Laden, at one point it was asked to kill him, cut off his head and ship it back to the US. One of British said he wounded. Where I am gonna find dry ice in Afghanistan. The Obama administration finally mounted an operation that found and killed bin Laden, but it also stepped up a campaign of drone welfare that killed numerous civilians at a time when the Taliban sized major territory for the first time in more than a decade. The film touches briefly on Donald Trump promulgation once he took office that he could win the war in a week but it had involved killing 10 million people and wiping a one stone off the map. But by the point, the focus of the first isn't on one man still silly bossing but one with a 2019 Washington Post investigation documented as 18 years of US official misleading the public about their operations in Afghanistan. It wasn't even mission creep, says only military officers of the complete lack of a plan in the country. It was mission fantasy. 
One of Joanne Heather, the film's talking heads, described the mess that Afghanistan has always been for outsiders and as if to underline the disorientation, most are filmed in empty rooms and from to show vast open spaces behind them. The one who receives different treatments in the CIA operative Maddox, who is positioned as the conscience of the film. Before the narrative begins, she gets an intro that shows her in her daily life as a mother of young girls. It's the kind of setup not afforded any other of the film subjects. So when she says her hurts, hurts for the Afghanistan at the beginning of the film, or when she returns to that team near the end and says, I don't see how this war could be won. We are mean to listen and crookedly to feel. We do even as the film tries to end on a note of something other than hopelessness as it finds out that the age of its citizens make Afghanistan the youngest country outside of Africa. But if its future is in the hands of its youth, will they ever have the opportunity to build a new society from the wreckage of decades? The longest war can plant some seeds of hope but it can't make them grow. Our goal is to introduce you every Hollywood movie and English TV series. We express your opinion in comments below and let us know how you like our videos. Share our channel and thumbs up on our videos. If you have liked this informative video then press the below like button and encourage us. Thanks for watching.